And then you don't get to put a turbo sticker on it. Stick well, you can, but we all know you're lying. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I've done to this car has been lying. That's it. Yeah, so you yeah. know when people are saying, oh, drop a garage, built a Euro. I'm not even that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a lane built Euro. <laughs> not even a driveway. <laughs> it's got to be taxed every time I want to do something. To you know? Hello, folks. Welcome back to another episode of Cat Meets. Now, in today's episode, I'm super excited. I made my way down to Wales to meet up with a fella called John. He's got a Mark III Ford Capri, which is awesome because we love Capris. He's also got an ST170 engine, which is awesome because I love ST170 engines. He's also got a turbocharger, which is awesome because turbochargers are awesome. So I jumped in cap, went down to South Wales to go and meet up with John, have a really good look over his car and have a really good talk about the jobs that he's been doing and bits and pieces like that. Now the main thing is he has done a couple of dyno runs but that's for setup and hasn't managed to get a full power run done. Since filming this video, he has managed to get a power run done. So at the end, I'm gonna reveal what he ended up making with his engine in that car. For now, roll the intro. So the first thing to say is that I've already done a video on a Ford Capri. It was with Valerie, uh, James's Mark III, 2.1 litre S, and we talked a little bit about the kind of history of Capris, so I'm not gonna bore you with that sort of stuff today. Today's video is more about kind of the modification side of things. We ended up meeting actually um, in a McDonald's car park, and it being a nice Sunday morning, uh, ended up being quite busy and we were hounded by many many people wanting to see and take pictures of our cars So we we moved on and we found a nice quiet common where we could have a bit of a chin wag um, Still deserved, but by this point it was by dogs uh, We managed to get through quite a lot of chat. Why is it that we bother modifying cars? I mean first up we talk about reliability and Eco economy, especially with our far better halves, when we're trying to convince them that we definitely need to buy this couple of hundred pound new engine. But realistically, it's more about power. Having a good amount of power out of a reliable engine is a really, really nice thing to have. And we spoke about it a little bit with my brother in the MV6 powered Reliance Scimitar video, um, Cat Meets the Beast, about the fact that um, being able to drive the car to, around, and back from track days is pretty much the pinnacle. So that's why I've chosen to go with the ST170 engine. So meeting up with John at Shelsley Walsh and having a really good look and chat over his car, it seems he's done a couple of different engines in that car, including the ZTEX um, and then onto the ST170. So we managed to have a real good chat about that sort of stuff in this video, the sort of teething issues that he came across and the awesomeness that is his now turbocharged ST170 powered Mark III for Capri. So we'll crack on now, I'll show you the footage from the day um, when I went down to see John and I'll catch up with you at the end of the video. So uh, where do you start in uh, in classic cars and stuff? What was your what was your first car? My first car yeah, was a Mark yeah, yeah, Three really Fiesta, yeah. 1.1, 1. 86 miles per hour, and I met that a few times. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> I think that because I could have gone anyway. If I bought a Vauxhall, I would have been a Vauxhall nut. If I bought I don't know for anything, you know, I would have ended up going down that road. So yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't really set in my way. My father had old cars, yeah, double Fords. So can you remember any, any of them as a kid? Yeah, yeah, Capris all the time. Was, was it? I was sitting in the steelworks waiting for him when he ran in for a, a little job or something. Yeah. In, in like the forecourt of the steelworks, sitting in the passenger seat of a Capri. I don't remember which one. He had so many. Yeah, yeah. Playing with the um, the, ref the traffic light air fresheners. Yeah, yeah. Gem, <laughs> yeah. And playing with the cassette in it and stuff. And yeah, yeah. The glove box. I can't remember how old I was. I must have been about 10, 11. Oh, that's cool. Growing up Technically the first there. car I drove. Steered the wheel, yeah, pulled yeah. the pedals on my father's lap in uh, like a um, built well showground actually. Yeah, yeah. It was a Capri. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just always in them. Yeah. I always remember them. And so this technically my first classic, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If I'm on classic insurance, I'm a classic car owner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, th this was my only classic, really. Yeah. I so got, it, start, got, it um, started off as a two litre auto. What, what was the trim level? It's a litre. It's a laser, and was that's, it? Was it any C regions really? Isn't it? Was it original colour? And, what, what was the original colour and stuff? This. Okay. It really. And when you bought you, it, if you it see was all pictures of it, the only thing that's really changed is the fact that it's not got the white front end. Yeah. Oh. I'm stuck whether to go purple. Yeah. I was set on um, a Citroen purple on, on a C3 Picasso. Yeah. But you can't find pink for it. So if you can't find pink now, well, the car's still on sale. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Gonna find it in ten years. Yeah. 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 That's true. Uh, that's true. I'm gonna go purple. There's a Honda bit like purple. So you're looking quite deep, like yes, very like a very metallic deep. I don't know what you can put. Like a, is it dark enough? Kind of to... like a Cadbury colour, but metallic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or maybe a bit more magenta than yeah. Cadbury's. Or grey, kind of like my STC grey. 
Yeah. It's purple and a bit of a gun. Yeah. My granddad passed away and he left me inheritance enough to paint it. And he died thinking I was gonna do a purple, so there's that as well. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because he was he was That's really a nice slightly sentimental link to it. That's yeah. like his his hallmark on the Capri. Yeah, we, yeah. Painting a purple. Yeah. Tricky decision, man. It is, Tricky it decision. is. Well, my biggest appreciation for the car comes into it is the fact that how far it's come and how many engines it's gone through, you know? Like, it's gone two Pintos when I first started. I didn't kill the first one. The first one was already dead. Yeah. It had boiled, so I rebuilt the head and put it back on. <laughs> Went to start, I thought, oh, there's water coming out of the exhaust. <laughs> Took the head back <laughs> off. And it, it was it was filling with water in the cylinder, so either the head was warped or the block was warped. I thought, how do you do that to a cast iron head? So that come out, put another one in it, um, and then it wouldn't drive. Yeah. But it was an auto, don't forget. And the oh, carb right. never really worked. So it was either the fact that the carb wouldn't rev enough to make it move, and don't forget, an auto has got to have enough revs to make it move. Yeah, yeah. Because you can rev it a bit before it starts to pull off. Yeah. Before the torque converter kicks in. So it was a case of is it the carb or is it the auto? So in the end, they dumped the auto, put a manual in it, done the pedals and everything. Yeah. Fully converted it. And the note that um, reverse light works. Yeah, yeah. People forget to do that when they convert. <laughs> um, and then it still wouldn't drive. And, oh, Christ, it wasn't that. It was the it was the carb. So we had the carb rebuilt, the ion capri power, and then it drove then. And then I killed the engine, didn't I? So that engine had gone. So then I was like, right, sod it. C tech time. Yeah, yeah. So I put that in with the carb. Um, and it started pinking. But all the coolant had gone. So it got so hot it pinked. Yeah. Plus the carb's not exactly reliable for AFRs, is it? Yeah, yeah. So it pinked the hole, it burnt the hole just between the two valves on the intake. Bloody hell. Swap that then for another one. And that was the second seat there. Which was fine, I sold that in the end, just before I put this in. But I didn't trust it was burning oil. Yeah, so yeah. That was still on the carbs. And then I thought, right, I want to get rid of the carbs because they're either on or off. You know, driving around town, it's like, yeah, or just yeah, nothing, yeah. you know. So I thought, right, let's, let's put injection on it. But I didn't want to lose the power because you gain an extra 30 or so from the carbs. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. So I didn't want to actually lose the power. So I thought, right, how am I going to get around dropping 30 horsepower when I switch the injection? So I thought, that's yes, one's empty. And then I don't know why, but I just thought, right, turbo it. Since I like got a car on FiestaTurbo.com, everyone was just turbo in VTEX at the time. Yeah, yeah. And I would just patiently, quietly just watch what they were doing. So I, got, I amassed 10 years of knowledge on it without even doing it. Yeah. And then when it came to doing it, it just it just seemed to have gone right straight away. Yeah, yeah. It's had season issues, but nothing really turbo related. All teething issues, isn't there, when you do a project like that? The only teething issue that's turbo related was the fact that it's a Chinese turbo. And if you get a big one, then notorious for having too small of a um, wastegate valve hole. Uh, so right. behind the penny, the hole, I think I measured in 19 mil. Yeah. It's tiny. Considering it's a T4 turbo. Yeah, yeah. Holds a lot of air. So the only problem was that it was just over boosting. So when I was having it set up by the tuner, it was just spiking to about 22 psi. Considering it's yeah, standard it's bottom yeah. end, you don't want that. Yeah, yeah. You melt something, or bend something. Yeah. So I had to fit an external wastegate. But apart from that, the turbo side of it's all brilliant. The stupid <laughs> things like the ECU didn't want to work. I'm not going to mention the make of it because I don't think it was actually the fault of the company. Yeah, fair it enough. It was the fact yeah, yeah. I bought a second hand one. Yeah. Um, wouldn't run like so I left it all winter after doing it all without actually being able to use it yeah and yeah. then big shout out to Michael Clark at uh, Ignition Advantages because he bought it I think there's four wires you got to wire in yeah wire in, plug all the plugs in and it fires up and it runs perfectly straight away yeah that's the Max Mini DC it's just perfect I recommend them to anyone yeah, yeah. 800 pound and you've got a running car no far yeah you know that's pretty good going, isn't it? it? I'll chuck a link in the description below for him. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen him actually myself, which is probably He's got I a dino and see. everything, yeah. He's got a good YouTube. He's quite <laughs> yeah, a lot. I'm planning on doing some <coughs> SD170 projects in the future. Uh, um, the car itself has just gone through such a journey. I mean, nine years, but it's, it's like a lifetime of just random stuff. So the engine that's in there now, I don't think we've spoken about this on the camera thing. The engine that's in there now. I don't know, I've gone into so depth and I'm just on the party feet. So I've, uh, I've spoken about quite a few times on the channel about my want to adapt this car to an ST170. Uh, initially that was driven a little bit by Marcus Hayes, who's got the two uh, escorts. I'm watching him on YouTube a lot of the time, but then I saw um, John Capri at Pure Ford and then met up with him and actually chatted to you at 
retro rides. Seeked me out. Seeked you out in retro rides. I think you found my car before me, didn't you? Yeah. I was just sleeping next to it when John came back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because he's got an SU-170 engine in here. So. Oh, because I leave the bonnet up, don't I? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you you, you z teched it beforehand. z teched it beforehand, so it made all the conversion easy. Yeah, because all, all, all the bottom end stuff is all z tech isn't it? On yeah. the, on the SU-170. It's just got a big ass turbo on it. And yeah. It doesn't come in until about four. So and it's flowing a lot of air at that point. So it's just, a lot of people turbo one of these and you only get about 250. Yeah. On a standard bottom end now, without you know lowering the compression and stuff at 15 PSI. But because it's such a big turbo, it's, the tune I reckon is gonna end up making about 290. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's yeah. a lot, like. That's a lot. On a standard a bottom end as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's kind of safe. It's got a standard gearbox. Five feet, you know, yeah. type nine. Yeah. They're only meant to be good for 200. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Standard disc on the back. Say, I've which, been talking to them about like 200 horsepower being their kind of peak because of the gearbox. Well, yeah, <laughs> and that's what I was thinking, but it's it, the, buying that big turbo up by accident, not knowing what size I was ordering, has really lent itself yeah, yeah. to fit because like, it's got a standard clutch. Yeah. The clutch is only meant for 130 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the clutch from the ST engine, it's the clutch that I had when I had the original ZTEC old, in it. Yeah, yeah. So the clutch is only meant for 130, and it doesn't slip at 15 PSI. <laughs> That's fuck, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, that, that turbo, is, he reckons 290, but I imagine I'm going to be slipping by then, so I might want to get it a might, clutch might be then. some upgrades coming. Yeah. And I'd rather swap the gearbox before I break it, because type lines are worth something now. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I didn't pay for this, I swapped a set of Galotos for it. But, Did you? <laughs> yeah, but they were worth about 200 then. They're worth about 350, 400 now. Yeah. So eventually I'll go for an RX8 box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might put a turbo sticker on it now. The problem with the SD170 is it, it rarely makes 170. Yeah. They're usually like, what, 50, 160, yeah, even in yeah. an ST. Um, so, but, the, you know, that's still 50 more than you've probably got now, you know, so it's, it's all right. But yeah. you'll be getting reliability is your best. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. You know? If you tweak an SD170 up a little bit, or you get a Pinto at 200 horsepower, then you're... A Pinto at 200 horsepower is about five grand. Yeah. I mean, I'm about... I'm less reliable, probably. Four grand into this. <laughs> probably. And 250, 260. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did I say? Like five grand for a 200... What? Well, no, not even that. I don't think so. Pintos are stupid. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. One, th so. one thing about having this, to be fair, is once it, once I get the Pinto out, I'll be able to sell it for yeah, probably yeah, the yeah. majority of the. It's not two or five. SD one seventy built. Yeah, two or five is. block. Yeah, oh, you got the money then. Yeah, that'll pay for most of the conversion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. So, um, are you pretty happy in terms of the power that it's at now? Have you got any other plans for the? Well, I was saying to you earlier when I was on track at Coombe, it can hold off things that are a lot more powerful because yeah, yeah. it's light. Um, yeah, but I would like about 300. I'm, I was I'm scared I'm going to ruin about, it by going too far. Yeah, we were chatting about it with my brother on the MV6 video about the the balance. Yeah. And it's about kind of knowing when you've got there. Yeah. And because you can you can make a really, really nice balanced car and then if you if you chuck another 50 or you know even 100 horsepower if you go mental on it on top, then it, then it That's the thing changes the turbo, things a lot. Do you know what I mean? You, you can push turbo engines so far and yeah. it's not that hard to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start forging it and you're off you go, you know? Yeah. So yeah, um, no, it's, it's worth it's worth stopping if, you, if yeah. you're in a good place for sure. But don't forget, it's a ton. It's a light car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're quite skittish as it is. So we're going to go for another drive. <laughs> We're going to go and find another spot for a few more photos and, and clips and stuff like that. Hopefully before um, it rains as well. Before it rains, weather, hopefully, yeah. And then um, I might jump in and have a, have a little ride in the, in the monster for a minute or two as well. So we'll catch up with you guys in a bit. Ha, ha, ha. 
I just love that wastegate. <laughs> it's addictive. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> it feels like a lovely amount of power, to be sure. Yeah, but you've got, really got to rev it to get to the wind. Yeah, yeah. Like right now, two and a half. I'm only just tipping it into the pulse of the charge. Yeah. It doesn't start to come on on a boat. Crazy Bluetooth monster the stereo here, yeah. and an actual cup holder. Yeah, and I'm surprised I was able to find that some of the fit because I was turning up places with staining, coffee stains on the crotch, yeah, and yeah. holding it between my legs. <laughs> this I had spare, I bought it for the ST, and it didn't have DAB, so I bought another one with DAB. Ah, sweet, yeah. So yeah. I still had this one, so rather than sell, pop it in. sell it, yeah, I like cut the thing. But obviously, the heater dials are gone. What are, they, what are the buttons for? That's fog light. That's the TV light. Oh, it's all the buttons that were there. Sort of. Yeah, yeah. That one will be 5.5 psi. Yeah. Valley mode. That one's now full boost. Launch control, press in, press the punch, and launch control's activated. Yeah, yeah. And that's the one. That's amazing. And yeah. And the boost gauges. AFR, most important gauge in the car. Yeah. You know, I need to know what it's doing. Because and another important one down here is temperature for the oil. Oh, nice, yeah, yeah, I didn't put that one. Yeah, I know, they're quite subtle. No, no, the way I eat yeah, them, they're, they're always cool. players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really cool. Good place to go different up there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the gauge isn't work. <laughs> You've done, um, like, a lot of the bits and pieces, like, you were saying it's a, it's a budget build and that you're trying to do it as cheap we as possible. We started off as cheap as possible, but stuff like the uh, yeah, the AEM gauge, you can't get away from that. That's 160 quid whether you like it or not, you can't get it cheaper. Yeah, so yeah. when I've had to spend, I've had to spend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I could have gone, no, I don't need any, you know, AFR gauge. But you do when you're doing it all budget and stuff, you know. Yeah. If that was to go into the 50s while you flat out, you were going to melt something. Yeah. So then you've got to start again. So I guess like you've, you've taken it on the track a couple of times and stuff as well, haven't you? You don't want to be... Once so far, it's due now on Halloween action. Like, yeah. you, don't, you don't look at the gauges while you're doing track. You? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess not. Eyes out. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have noticed my old, my old pressure drop when I was out. It's good to know what's happening. Brakes feel all right, man. Yeah. <laughs> They're a bit wooden at first. But they, they do go when you're really good to weak them. Yeah, yeah. But you've got to put some weak But it's two remote servos. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. It's got the normal, it's got a land probe on it, actually. Yeah, yeah. The that's the one I went for, yeah. Board servos, just down in the wing. Yeah, nice. So, that's probably the wooden thing. Things like the power steering, um, it's cheap. I bet it has. Yeah, it's a good addition, that. How easy was that as a job? I didn't actually buy a um, cross member, I, I adapted my own, and I don't think I got it spot on. It's slightly easier to turn left than it is right. I don't think the balance is quite good thing. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, I yeah. definitely recommend going on the active cross Yeah. Which I will do. Plus, you have to adapt it to fit the how like, the surround the path where the actual room is right. It's so much bigger on the power steering model. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. You've really got to open up the mount to get the mount. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Something yeah. else I would do is solid mount getting good to the chassis. So that is John's Mark III for Capri, ST170 powered, turbocharged for Capri. What a machine it is, it was so cool. John actually let me have a very quick drive, which was absolutely awesome, really appreciate that. Um, and it did really highlight the crazy power. Um, at the low end with the kind of torque and stuff, you can see that it's a more, more powerful, nicer engine to drive than the Pinto is. And I think the ST, even naturally aspirated, is gonna be an absolutely badass engine to pop into cat. And I can't wait to get started uh, on that project.
But actually, when you get up to that 4,000 RPM, 3,500, 4,000 RPM, and you start to feel that boost coming in, it's just crazy. And it's a monster turbo, so it keeps on pushing. It's flowing a lot of air, uh, and let off the gas and the wastegate is, uh, is addictive. It is addictive. As I said, John's done a couple of power runs, but more for setting up, and he's now done a proper full power run just to see what he's got. And a massive shout out and thanks to John of That Capri Turbo on Instagram, and also John Johnny B4 on YouTube. So make sure to go and give him a follow um, and a subscribe if you haven't already. There's lots of build videos that he's got of his um, project on his YouTube channel as well. I'm gonna be getting this SD170 engine over the next couple of months. I'm actively looking now, so hopefully fairly soon that should be in the garage. That's gonna start up a whole new series of videos in terms of the strip down and the, and the build back up of that engine ready to go into CAT next winter. Also loads and loads of jobs coming up, but as well as that, more CAT meets videos. If it's something you're interested in getting involved with over the winter, make sure to drop me an email. I'll pop my email in the description below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications bell. Make sure you don't miss out on any of the future upcoming videos. So the last thing to say, and the one thing that you're here for is the power run. John was really hoping for top 200s. He thinks it's up there. He's had a little bit of a run around Castle Coombe and was doing a fairly good job of holding off a, S, a Focus ST which had something like 350 horsepower so he was fairly confident it was fairly high. It's a big ass turbo on a fairly good engine so there's no reason why it wouldn't be. He did a power run and he managed to get 300 horsepower. Wallop! So here's the printout he sent me through um, and here's the actual figure. What a machine. Thanks so much to John for coming out and joining me for the video in for today's episode. I really appreciate your time and also massive congratulations on getting that 300 horsepower. I bet you're absolutely buzzing and chuffed. So now guys, I'm just going to leave you with a couple of other episodes. Here I'm going to pop Cat Meets the Beast, which is my brother's MV6 powered. Reliant Scimitar, an absolute beast it is too. Here I'm going to pop up Cat Meets Natalie, which is the old shell which someone has restored for racing. Here there's going to be a little button. Hit that, it will subscribe you to the channel and I really hope to see you on a future episode. Till next time guys, drive safe.